you need to be a mathematical genius to grasp the complexities of general relativity? Do you need to have a PhD in mathematics to master these concepts? What exactly do you need to know to learn general relativity? In this video, I am going to tell you step by step how to develop your skills to learn general relativity. You will be surprised to know that it is not actually mathematics but something different that you need to have to learn this subject. I am also going to tell you what is the first step, what is the first book and what is the first lesson that you need before you embark on this journey of learning Einstein's general theory of relativity. Remember, you do not have to be a mathematical prodigy to learn this subject. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to this lesson, what mathematics do you need to learn general relativity? First, let us look into what are the topics that we are covering to understand this subject. First, we need to know that is it really about relativity we are learning or something else? What are the skills that you need to learn general relativity? We will cover the problems that you face and what are the possible solutions. We are also going to look what are the things that you need to know and what is the physics actually that you need to know to learn general relativity which is the best book to start reading with and why you should read this book and a very very important point that you should not miss before you start learning this subject. So this video is going to be very very important. It is a step by step approach and you will be surprised to know that you already have the skill to go ahead and learn general relativity but something different that you just need to polish and something different you need to learn. So having said these topics, first let us look into this question that is it all about relativity or something else that general relativity speaks about. So first we will look that special theory of relativity which is basically the base before we go into general relativity particularly deals with certain things. One is it deals with obviously inertial frame of reference, it deals with speed and velocity, it is experimentally provable and it deals with frames of reference. These are quite easy, those who have learned through the basics of special relativity, you all know. But what is the inference that we can draw from this, we will come back later. But first let us look what general relativity actually deals with. It deals specifically with non-inertial frames of reference. Obviously, when Einstein's equivalence principle came into the picture, he told that we are now going to deal with non-inertial frames of reference. Obviously, the main center idea is gravity. It is basically the geometry of space-time and it is on a larger scale. That means it is applicable, applicable on a cosmological scale. Now what is typical, what is uh, quite uh, uh, striking is that you see special theory of relativity deals with relativity and simultaneity. That means it deals with speed, time, space, etc. So the relativistic approach is more predominant in special theory of relativity. Whereas if you talk of general relativity, it is mostly the study of geometry. That means it is a study of surfaces, curvatures, manifolds, intrinsic curvature, extrinsic curvature and lot of other things. So what is the inference that we draw from here? That means special theory of relativity is more about relativity and general relativity is more about geometry. So here is the conclusion, less of relativity, more of geometry. So in this part, when we just started this video, I hope you understand that it is not about relativity as a whole. Yes, there is relativity, but it is more of the geometry and the geometrical structure of space-time, which found a paradigm shift. And that is what marks the main central idea of general relativity. I am going to prove that in a few minutes time and then we will uh, start learning that why do we need these things and why do we don't need the other things. So when we start uh, with the components of learning general relativity, I will just list down basic components or there is a huge number of other components not possible in a single video. We deal with what is called a space-time manifold, local and global structures. We deal a lot with tensors, uh, Ricci tensor, uh, um, uh, 
reach a Riemann curvature tensor, right? Uh, this I have dealt very recently in a video called Tensors in General Relativity. We deal a lot with coordinate transformation, Ricci curvature tensor, curvature scalar, curva Ricci curvature tensor, uh, geodesics, Schwarzschild metric, metric tensor, crystal symbols, black holes, Einstein field equations, affine connection, and parallel transport. Now, if you see more or less, you can understand that the basic or the major components starting from the basics of relativity going up to the cosmological scales, these are the basic ideas that we cover. Now, my question to you is that what is common in all these structures? Can you, can you just g get an idea? What exactly is all common in space-time manifold curvature, scalar metric tensor, black holes, parallel transport? Here is the answer. All of them consist of more of geometry rather than mathematics. Obviously, mathematics is there, other, otherwise how will we calculate the geometry? But overall, from space-time manifold to Einstein field equation, uh, covariant derivative, parallel transport, Ricci curvature tensor, all of them actually deals with geometry rather than mathematics. I will take one more, uh, a few more minutes in order to establish this fact and then we will embark on our journey to learn general relativity. So special relativity dealing with relativity of simultaneity, length contraction, time dilation, relativistic mass, universal speed time, uh, speed limit that is the speed of light and mass energy equivalence. All of this actually is more relativistic in approach and this is coming from the basic idea which is called Lorentz transformation. I am quite sure those who are watching this video are quite aware of this fact of what is Lorentz transformation. So length contraction, time dilation, uh, relativity simultaneity, all of this is basically more of coming from Lorentz transformation and we can say all of them are quite linear in nature. They are moving in a linear direction and that is why it is made from inertial frame of reference. Now when we move from here to general theory of relativity, we see gravitational time dilation, gravitational waves, frame dragging, black holes, singularities, uh, event horizons, all of these are mostly covariant in nature. Now, if you go to my video earlier in metric tensor, you will understand what is covariant theory of gravity. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to mean is that all of them are actually moving hand in hand. If this is so, if that is so. Covariant is basically a very technical term. But what you can understand from here is this, that it is nonlinear in nature. That means from the linear frame of reference or a linear learning of uh, uh, physics, now we are moving into nonlinear in nature. Further, what we can see is this, all these relativistic effects, if I put time dilation, length contraction, simultaneity, all of them, if I put in a bunch, which is called the relativistic effects for special relativity, when they get generalized, you see this one on the right hand side. It gets generalized and we get a curved space time. So, you see there is a huge paradigm shift because from relativity, from relativistic effect, from inertial frame, we are moving to non-inertial frame. So, there is a huge paradigm shift and we got, we get it generalized into curved space time. What does it mean? It means this, from relativity, we are moving to geometry. We are getting a complete change in the mathematics because now we will be learning more about geometry, less about the relativistic uh, mathematics and our understanding of coordinates have changed. Obviously, if the coordinates have changed, then how we can move from flat or Minkowski space-time to curved space-time? So I'm just establishing the fact so that you know that it is less about relativity and more about geometry and that requires a paradigm shift and understanding of a different kind of a mathematics which is generally not told or taught in, uh, in, the, in the textbook. So general theory of relativity is more of a geometry rather than relativity or simultaneity. It primarily deals with the geometry as the intrinsic nature of space-time rather than extrinsic. Now, you, you will immediately question what is extrinsic uh, what, what is extrinsic geometry or global school? That is something which is called topology. And you have seen, I have made a lot of shots and videos where I have exactly uh, told you the difference between differential geometry and topology. What should be learned first? Anyway, that is a different part of the story. 
So you see all these parallel transport, covariant derivatives, Christopher symbols, geodesics, curvature tensors, stress energy, Schwarzschild solutions. These are more of a geometric understanding of physics, geometric understanding of mathematics. It is all the understanding of curvature. It is more intuitive in nature and it contains obviously a lot of exotic mathematics, new mathematics, mathematics which develop through ages and mathematics which we need to learn in order to learn general relativity. So now that I have established this fact that this is more of a geometric understanding of the curvature of space time and geometry requires more intuitive understanding and it demands more of exotic mathematics. So you see all these things to summarize length contraction, time dilation, transforming even Maxwell's equation to special relativity, speed of light, etc. And on the right hand side, we get tensors, geodesic, parallel transport, Riemann curvature, curvature tensor. This is basically what we call the transition from relativity to geometry and less of relativistic effect, more of the nature of space time. So this is actually the most important uh, part that is why I ask this question is it all about what do we mean by textbook relativity no it is not the textbook relativity but it is more of the geometrical structure of this space time and there is a total paradigm shift from the basic mathematics moving into geometry so now we come to the question what are the skills that you need to learn uh, that you need in order to learn general relativity. Now, what I would like to show you is that general relativity, as we know, deals with the geometry of space-time. Hence, we will be needing more of geometry. Now, obviously, it goes hand in hand that if geometry is there, mathematics definitely will be there. But in, uh, I mean to say, a general mathematics, linear algebra, differential equation, partial differentials, matrices, Lagrangian, etc., that is a different kind of a mathematics. But when we are geom dealing with geometry, we deal with the mathematics of geometry so here it says more than mathematics more than mathematics you need to understand geometry and these are the few points a complete understanding of geometry you should be able to conceive abstract ideas able to visualize and able to have a spatial visualization I've been reading a lot of blogs uh, you know in uh, physics forum and etc the basic thing those who are uh, those who really understand general relativity, they all agree to this point that I have not taken general relativity because I need to understand differential geometry, which may be difficult, challenging or whatsoever. But I am here not to uh, make you uh, um, feel frustrated or don't be pessimistic. I will show you the steps in which this geometric understanding will become easier. So what does this geometry actually demands from you? Number one, you need to learn and absorb geometry first. Second is that most of the students, you will see that they jump into the mathematics, that is tensor calculus, that is differential geometry, curves and surfaces. This is the biggest mistake that you make. You should not do that. First, you understand geometry. You should be able to visualize things. You need, uh, you need to have a visualization ability and what is called conceiving abstract ideas. Why abstract ideas? Why visualization? I will just come up in the next part of the video. So here is the conclusion. You need to have an intuitive mind and that is why uh, I was uh, watching few of the videos of Professor Leonard Saskine and others. They all say that GR or general relativity is more intuitive than being mathematical. Now, immediately you will ask me that what is more mathematical? I would say quantum field theory or quantum mechanics. General relativity as it deals with geometry. When you close down your eyes, you visualize geometry, lines, angles, polygons, 3D surfaces. So what are you doing? You are basically trying to imagine, visualize and that is why you need to have an intuitive mind and that is why GR is more intuitive than mathematical. So now we come, what are the problems that you might face when you are understanding geometry and what could be the possible solutions? The first thing is this one, visualization. So what I would request is that you practice regularly, draw and sketch anything, any geometrical figure that comes across, Visual, try to visualize three-dimensional objects, construct different kind of models that you can through pen and paper, sketches, etc. And also do study optical illusions because the more you study illusions, say for example, there are a lot of illusions like MC, Escher's waterfall, etc. The moment you face that kind of an illusion, your eyes get strained, your brain gets strained and you can see something other which normally 
normal people cannot see so that is what is called studying optical illusions and in order to know that uh, do that you need to do what construct models practice and draw and sketch the second thing which comes as a hurdle is abstract reasoning so you need to have puzzle solving you can do a lot of analogies and patterns you can have a mental visualization you involve yourself more into creative thinking and divergent thinking that is from here to another so you you get a kind of a uh, i would say an abstract idea an abstract reasoning which doesn't have a direct logical sense and that is uh, another problem you might face and these are the solutions third one obviously is logic because geometry deals with logic puzzle solving i would request you to do and analyze what is called a truth table venn diagrams you can also do a lot of inductive reasoning to mathematical proofs etc and uh, the sixth point is very important be aware of your emotional biases i very recently made a video call how can you develop critical thinking the very basic and very important is that we are all biased uh, we are all biased and we need to come out of that emotional bias so that we can do a proper critical thinking and to enhance our logical power also and also what comes are complex diagrams so for complex diagrams i would suggest you identify what are the components of the complex diagram you can analyze the structure you can consult external sources how the complex diagrams are uh, drawn you can ask questions and most importantly you practice and compare with simple examples which are not that complex so you can understand what is a complex diagram these will be required in general relativity that is why i am saying next comes what is called geometric transformations this again reflects abstract thinking because you see there is a translation from this object to that object how will the object behave when it is rotated how will the object look like when it is dilated what would be the reflection of the concept so shear etc all these will be very beneficial and useful for general relativity so all you need to do is that have a concept of geometric transformation you cannot always make physical objects you draw imagine close your eyes and extend your mental ability to understand and comprehend what are called geometric transformations then comes what is called visualization in higher dimensions i have kept it at the last because this is really difficult to do so you can start with lower dim dimensions say for example uh, zero uh, point zero dimension that a line then you go to two dimension third etc and so on you can uh, you can visualize hypercube which would be relatively easy you can study cross section for example cylinder cube hypercube or any kind of a three di three dimension and how do you do the cross section and what is the outcome of that you can see lot of animations on youtube and you can study mathematical concepts and the last one is called problem solving skills obviously in geometry you need to have a problem solving skill so you need to embrace creativity implement the solutions generate possible solution and you should have an attitude to solve problems so these are what we can call uh, you might face the problems when you are dealing seriously with geometry and these could be the possible solution now there is one good news you might be thinking oh my goodness i have to learn all those things how will i do that now i will show you something very uh, optimistic and you will love that so all these things visualization abstract reasoning logic complex diagram geometric transformation higher dimension and problem solving you will see they overlap each other that means one concept actually overlaps with other so the good news is that if you learn one you will learn the other easily so if you learn visualization um, automatically the abstract reasoning and higher dimension will come if you learn logic then you will be able to understand complex diagram and you will have a problem solving skills so that is why i just told you that they actually overlap with each other it is not that you have to spend years and years only in logic only in complex diagram but any one you will see your mind will automatically get transferred and transformed into other thoughts and you will be able to learn them okay now we come what are the things that you need to know uh, when i tell what are the things i mean to say mathematics physics overall the approach and here i am going to show, show you something very interesting now this is a pie chart uh, why i am drawing this pie chart you see the classical physics is the blue one the modern physics is the uh, orange one the legend the basic mathematics is the uh, you can say this is a uh, uh, this is a 
um, kind of a what shade you can say gray and differential geometry is the yellow one which has got the biggest uh, I would say slice of our uh, pie chart now you see differential geometry this part is uh, the maximum which uh, which contains manifold curves metrics Riemannian geometry tensor geodesic parallel transport dot 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 that means immense I cannot I cannot mention them all in one the uh, the classical physics uh, sorry uh, the modern physics you might know a little bit of special relativity particle physics if you do not know astrophysics doesn't matter if you even do not know quantum physics doesn't matter now most important is that in classical physics you need to need to need to have a super control and super understanding of gravity the electromagnetism conservation of energy and obviously Kepler's planetary laws and in basic mathematics obviously all of them calculus vector algebra matrices linear algebra basic probability and statistics Fourier analysis complex Gaussian interval dot product dot 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 and most importantly calculus now this actually again proves and shows the fact that all you need to know is more and more and more about geometry a little bit of uh, modern physics a very good understanding of classical physics and a very good understanding of the basic mathematics so now I think you are quite happy and you will feel that you didn't did not need to have a PhD in mathematics or you didn't do, do not need to have a absolute I would say uh, what uh, uh, you a, a magical uh, person in who can understand any mathematics but actually what you need to know is this one okay now I would like to elaborate this so you see here you need to focus more on geometry and especially non-euclidean geometry obviously that is differential geometry which occupies the major portion you need to revisit the concepts of Newtonian mechanics especially gravity and learn the special relativity and the limitations particle physics astrophysics quantum mechanics really do you do not need to know to learn general relativity and you need to be particularly strong obviously in all branches of mathematics but here are few important obviously you need to know vectors very importantly linear algebra the concept of Lagrangian and Hamiltonian the concept of conservation of energy and absolute great mastery over calculus especially ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations now at this part of the video I hope I can make you understand that we from now on will be focusing more on understanding of geometry and less about physics physics special relativity that part we, we can come back later but the non Euclidean geometry and the understanding of geometry as a whole holds the key to unlock the treasures of general relativity and obviously Newtonian gravity so if you can say first Grav the geometry second in priority Newtonian gravity in parallel with the basic mathematics oh, so what is the physics that I need to know you might be asking okay so this is all about mathematics what is the physics that I need to know it is a huge list I'm <laughs> very sorry to tell all about Newtonian mechanics starting from inertia circular motion rotational speed angular speed angular momentum torque uh, D'Alembert principle frames of reference and everything second conservation of momentum linear momentum all about conservation of you know energy resources and projectile motion escape velocity potential will gravitational uh, potential potential energy and body theorem Lagrangian point etc so all in all just to summarize this long thing this is the basic idea whatever you gain understand and acquire about classical gravity anything that you feel that yes I need to know anything or everything about classical gravity not do not confuse again with quantum gravity or modern uh, uh, the curvature tensors classical gravity and this would be an absolute essential before you take the first step in understanding generate video I will show you also in a few minutes why classical gravity is important now the question is that what is the first take that I should take I mean to say what is the first book what how would I go these are all understanding but practically what I need to do this is the book Euclidean and non Euclidean development and history by Marvin J Greenberg the third edition I will soon tell you also that why you need to learn Euclidean non Euclidean geometry in Amazon you get a rating of 4.2 of 5 and this is Marvin J Greenberg he received his doctorate in 1959 uh, from Princeton University under the very famous mathematician Sir Glang go to Amazon search out sang Sir Glang's he has got absolutely great books on linear algebra so you can understand the credibility of this person 
I will just quickly show you a few excerpts from the book and then you can understand why I am talking of this. So you see it is a detailed and comprehensive understanding of Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry. First is that it will start with Euclid's geometry. It will, uh, the, uh, the professor will give you a thorough understanding of origins, axiomatic method, parallel postulate and then the, uh, the attempts to prove the parallel postulate and it will give you certain exercise to solve. Then it will go to logic and incidence geometry where this negation, quantifiers, incidence geometry, all these things are covered. Then it will come to Hilbert's axioms, axioms betweenness, axiom of congruence. This is absolutely methodically and designed in one of the best books that I have seen. Neutral geometry, it will also cover exterior angle theorem, measures of angle, etc. And then it will go to the history of the parallel postulate that it was proclaimed by Proclus and Valis back in Gr Greek. So that is how we tried to prove the history of par uh, the parallel postulate. Then it will deal with the independence of the parallel postulates, that the Poincaré model, the perpendicularity. Then it will show the philosophical implications of that. Then Professor Greenberg will show you what are groups, applications of geometric problems reflection rotation translation I was just talking about this that geometric transformations and then the discovery of the non-Euclidean theorem by Gauss, Lobachkvesky, Janus Bolai and others and there will be reviews, exercises etc. I have just covered the basic um, idea I mean to say the, the table of contents but there is a lot more into this book. Now the question is, yeah, so this is few more, Klein's uh, groups, application of geometric problems, uh, translations, half turns, further results in hyperbolic geometry and so on. Now the thing is that to summarize, this is the most comprehensive exposition of non-Euclidean geometry with an emphasis on hyperbolic geometry. It is very dense, it carries lot of historical facts, proofs are well made and this is a very basic but a great understanding of geometry. Starting from Euclid, moving up to non-Euclid. Now the question is that you might be saying out of all those books, thousand and works of non-Euclidean geometry uh, that is available in the market, why I am selecting this book? The answer is this one. This book gives you a historical understanding of non-Euclidean geometry. I have been talking about this in many of my videos. Be it geometry, be it real analysis, be it relativity, be it quantum physics. You need to have an understanding of why. And this why comes from understanding of historical developments of thought. Otherwise, it will be just a boring mathematics. That's all. The second is that it helps you to learn non-Euclidean geometry, why it was necessary. I just spoke. And also you will come to know, most of the students sometimes say that, that is it Einstein who discovered tensors? No. It is the concept of manifolds, hyperbolic geometry curvatures were discovered long back before Einstein's general relativity. Um, uh, 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 Riemann actually uh, propounded this manifold back in 1864 in Gottingen in his PhD uh, uh, thesis paper. So you will come to know those that it was not Einstein but those concepts of manifolds and curvatures were much much years earlier to that. It would give you a strong foundation of Euclidean and then it will take you to non-Euclidean because until you un understand the classical uh, Euclidean geometry you won't be able to understand non-Euclidean geometry and I have made this point very clear that general relativity actually stems from Newton's classical gravity and it is the easiest step that you can take in order to understand what are curvatures and surfaces. So this actually would be your first step before you do anything about general relativity. This is the first book and this is the first lesson and this is the first step that you should take. Start with the Euclidean geometry although you know brush up the concepts see into the historical development thoughts how things are coming into the, into the into the world and then get into non-euclidean geometry finally a very very important point which you should not miss and you should learn very attentively now you see if i take newtonian mechanics i can go from newtonian mechanics to general relativity and from general relativity i can go back to newtonian mechanics this might sound very weird but wait i will just show you why so First of all, you understand that general relativity obviously is a classical theory. Obviously, it's a classical theory. It's not a quantum theory. So you need to learn the classical theory of gravity in its best possible way. 
and you will see under low conditions from Newtonian physics we can go to general relativity and vice versa I have shown it in many of my videos but still I would like to show you a, a simple example now you see this is the uh, partial derivative of the gravitational potential that is the classical gravitational potential and you see this actually gets reduced to partial derivatives of metrics and you see there is Levi-Civita connection and all those things so you can see here that the gravitational potential that is a classical gravitational potential can be reduced to the metric tensor so what does that prove it proves that from classical Newtonian mechanics we can move into general relativity and vice versa also to show you more that under weak now uh, weak field approximation uh, that will require another video to exp uh, explain uh, just understand that uh, the the dust the particles the gravity the forces are moving very slowly so that the mathematical mathematics are easier so Christoffel symbols reduce much similar to Newtonian gravitation field you see d square r by dt square it is now basically the geodesic equation in the weak field limit of general relativity and also gm minus gm by r square this is ac actually the equation of motion in Newtonian gravity and this you see 0 0 that is the Christoffel symbol in this limit actually represents gravitational acceleration in general relativity so if you don't understand these terms these equations not to worry just understand that under weak field condition under weak field approximation we can find out that the Christoffel symbols are actually reducing to Newtonian gravity that again establishes the fact that you need to have a complete understanding of Newtonian gravity before learning general relativity this is the big geodesic equation which I have reduced to a uh, little bit uh, lesser and it will again go to f equals to ma that means what the geodesic movement along the curvature actually shows Newton's uh, second law f equal to ma and this uh, Einstein field equation you can go and check on I have just made a video called beginner's guide to Einstein field equations again gets reduced to f equals to g m1 m2 upon r square that is the famous Newton's law of gravity so from here we get the last three understanding we need to understand the classical physics first we also need to understand classical geometry and we will then proceed to understand to non-euclidean geometry so that establishes the fact that classical physics classical geometry classical geometry uh, classical euclidean geometry and then we move to non-euclidean geometry so that's all for today's video thank you very much for watching and taking out time if you have liked this video please do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get all the notification from physics for students you can also contact me and subscribe to the other channel which is exclusive to general relativity you can follow me on my facebook linkedin uh, uh, the instagram and uh, the uh, twitter channel and this is a page which you can also follow which is on the life of Stephen Hawking a fan page for Stephen Hawking which you can also follow and it is getting good number of followers so I wish you would follow and find new uh, areas of physics mathematics discoveries and biography do let me know how do you like the video and I will wait for your comment please make clear that these are the steps and this is how the learning of general relativity will follow don't fall into false traps don't go in directly into mathematics but it is is more of a geometry rather than speaking of the general mathematics I will be back soon making more videos on general relativity and other ideas till then goodbye and may the good Lord be with you